While we may like to think of athletes as these larger-than-life characters way out of our reach, it really doesn't take a lot to bring them back down to earth. Whether it be because of poor financial decisions or injury, some athletes have to take up quote-unquote regular jobs after they leave their sport. Here are 10 talented athletes who had to find regular jobs. Don't forget to hit subscribe and join the notification squad. Deuce McAllister a two-time Pro Bowler and Super Bowl champion, this former New Orleans Saint took up the ball after the Ricky Williams experiment failed. While it may have been originally thought that Williams could have had the better career, that wasn't the case. McAllister ended his career with a Super Bowl ring while Williams ended up in the CFL. One avenue that Williams had McAllister beat, though, was in financial security after football. Upon retirement, the former Saint started a car dealership which put him $7 million in the red. The dealership would be sued by Nissan, putting further financial strain on him. It got so bad that his Louisiana home had to be put up for auction in 2011. This was only a few years removed from his full-time playing with the Saints. Nowadays, he's gone from rushing through defenders to working as a public speaker. Need a keynote address or person for a meet and greet? McAllister is your man. That little bit of advertising is on the house, McAllister. Just take it. Terrell Owens Nothing about Terrell Owens should be ordinary, but here we are. The controversial former wide receiver for the San Francisco 49ers, Philadelphia Eagles, and so many others, this flamboyant personality had seen it all in the NFL. With all the money he made from the league, Owens should have had enough to live an ordinary life forever. But this is T.O. He can't even put on his underwear like a normal person. After playing his final season for the NFL in 2010, T.O. landed on his feet starring in the hit T.O. show on VH1. Due to money issues and fractured friendships, Owens found himself on hard times. Now with pro sports likely not being an option for the 43-year-old, Owens turned to a new gig for cash, modeling. No matter what people think of T.O., the man has a charm and is a good-looking dude. We think this six-time pro bowler can easily amass back a lot of the fortune he lost from his days on the gridiron. Just a tip of advice, T.O., if you still want to play sports, why not try MMA? It's worked out decently for Herschel Walker. Midian there might be some weird backstories to go with some athletes on this list, but we have to say former WWE wrestler Midian has the weirdest. Let's see. Midian has been an Arkansas hog farmer, a devil worshiper, and naked. Yep, at one point, his character was that he was a naked wrestler, save for a fanny pack and tidy whities Shockingly, being a fictional hog farmer didn't translate into mega bucks. While some pro wrestlers become multi-millionaires, most don't, and sadly for Midian, he was one of the lower dregs in the WWE. This, however, didn't stop him from pulling out a success successful career post-wrestling. Instead of stripping down, Midian began to bake, chop, and saute as he runs a catering company out of Lawrenceville, Georgia. While we've never tried his food, we have a little cause for concern. Has he tapped into the black arts to enhance his food? Does he not use pork? He might have grown an attachment to them with his previous gimmick. And finally, we really hope he puts some damn clothes on while he prepares his food, because that would be just damn disgusting. Luther Ellis not the most recognizable name on the list by any means, but Luther Ellis was a solid defensive tackle in his day. Playing eight of his nine seasons with the Detroit Lions, Ellis made the Pro Bowl in 1999 and 2000. While he was able to corner quarterbacks and tackle them to the ground, he wasn't able to secure himself an easy retirement. Ellis didn't suffer from any substance or gambling addiction, he just made some bad financial choices which caused him to lose his $12 million fortune from his football career. In his retirement, Ellis spends some of his time telling cautionary tales to rookies of the Detroit Lions on how to spend and save their money. In addition to that, Ellis has also worked with Play 60. Play 60 is an NFL-affiliated group that encourages children and adults alike to be active for at least 60 minutes a day. Hmm, maybe you don't get a giant 300-pound defensive tackle to encourage kids to be active. Kidding, kidding, Ellis. Please don't destroy us. Vince Young when Tennessee Titans quarterback Steve Air McNair left his longtime team in 2006, Titans fans had to look for another quarterback to guide them for the next generation. Enter Vince Young, the fresh University of Texas quarterback and Rose Bowl winner. While there was some speculation that Young wouldn't pan out in the NFL due to his unorthodox style, Titans fans had hope. However, frequent injuries and his inability to adjust to NFL defenses kept him from being the superstar he was thought to be. If that was bad enough, Young made some bad financial calls and had to take up a job where he once had his greatest success, the University of Texas. Young currently works at the school's Community Engagement Center. Young makes about $100,000 a year at this job, and while it's nothing compared to the NFL, at least it's stable. He also doesn't have refrigerator-sized men hurling their bodies at him, so that's a plus. Now, remember, Vince, just because you have this money doesn't mean you can spend $5,000 a week at the Cheesecake Factory, which you allegedly did in the past, all right? All right. Let this quiz question serve as a cautionary tale. Which league boasts the dubious statistic of having 78% of their players bankrupt or under financial stress two years after retirement? Spike Dudley 
The hardcore little brother of the bizarre Dudley family, Spike Dudley is known to most wrestling fans as the little man who took brutal amounts of punishment in ECW and WWE. This guy has been thrown into crowds, through tables, and through planets. Okay, we made that last one up, but if Paul Heyman could have booked it, you know he would. Never a big star for any promotion, Spike Dudley wasn't exactly sitting on a pile of gold and silver upon retirement from the squared circle. Thus, he had to think of a career plan post-grappling. Inspired by his marriage and desire to start a family, Dudley started working with Mass Mutual, a financial planning company. A few years too late, as a lot of wrestlers from his generation could have used that help, but we suppose we should applaud him anyway. Along with his desire for a stable family life, Dudley became a financial planner to help other athletes not fall into the pit of financial ruin. Maybe the other athletes on the list can call up Mr. Dudley for some help. Hmm. Dermonte Dawson Pittsburgh Steelers fans can sing the praises of the legendary Dermonte Dawson. The center is not exactly a position which gets the girls in the glory. They're kind of like the base players of the offense, but despite that, Dawson stood out. Managing to become a seven-time Pro Bowler and Pro Football Hall of Famer, Dawson is one of the most praised centers play the game. His skill on the gridiron didn't expend to money saving as he ended up $70 million in debt by 2010. By that time, Dawson was 44 years old and was freshly retired. Instead of going back on the field, Dawson took up a job as an intern for the Cincinnati Bengals and did some scouting work for the Steelers. Nowadays, Dawson works as an executive for a promotional products company in San Diego, California called Primetime Plus. What is a promotional products company, you ask? Well, anytime you see a USB stick, pen, or some other product that a university or something slaps their logo on, they likely have used a company like the one Dawson works at. Vin Baker. Quick, we know we already asked you a quiz question, but here's another one on the house. What is the most common job that is associated for college students the world over? Ding, 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 that's right, Starbucks worker. With that out of the way, let's talk about Vin Baker. Baker is a former NBA power forward and center who's played for several teams, including the Seattle Supersonics and Milwaukee Bucks. Like so many other players, though, Baker suffered from substance abuse problems later in his career, and that hurt his game tremendously. By the end of his career, Baker lost over $100 million in earnings. That loss can be attributed to a failed restaurant and too many friends and family coming to him for cash. Thankfully, former Seattle Supersonics owner and current Starbucks chairman Howard Schultz offered his former player a job at a Starbucks. Nowadays, Baker ascended to manager status of a Starbucks in North Kingstown, Rhode Island. Next time you complain about your pumpkin spice latte, keep in mind that you'll have to argue with a 6'11 former NBA player. Good luck with that. Chris Nowinski other athletes on this list may have tons of accolades and millions of fans, but Chris Nowinski may have a bigger impact on sports than all those others. A former college football and professional wrestler for the WWE, Nowinski's time in the spotlight was a brief one. After only a few years of wrestling, Nowinski suffered a bad concussion. Rather than take time off, though, Nowinski tried to wrestle with the symptoms for five weeks and only made it worse. This resulted in post-concussion syndrome, leading to an early retirement. This opened the door for Nowinski to put his Harvard-level brain to good use. He wrote the book Head Games, which detailed the NFL's concussion crisis and also founded the Concussion Legacy Foundation. The foundation's goal is to research the effects of brain trauma on athletes and other at-risk groups. Numerous athletes across all sports from boxing to football have donated their brains for study. We sincerely hope for the best in their studies. Not that we would pray for any brain injury to occur to ourselves, but, but if we could spontaneously forget about Nowinski's awful match against Bradshaw and Trish Stratus way back in 2002, that would be very nice. Musin Muhammad Still the holder of the longest reception in Super Bowl history, Musin Muhammad was never quite the top receiver on either the Bears or the Panthers. However, he was always one of the most reliable and smart receivers in the game. While smart on the field, Muhammad was a little too risky with his money off of it. Opening a record label in retirement, Muhammad's financial partners sucked up all the money without making any profit, leaving Muhammad with his keister blowing in the wind. More embarrassingly, Moose was sued by Wakiova for failing to pay his credit card bill of $25,000 and also was forced to sell his home on eBay. That home in question also included the biggest private aquarium in the southwestern United States. Maybe Muhammad should have played for the Dolphins if he loved the water creatures that much, huh? Muhammad eventually bounced back from his woes and picked up the ball before he lost it for good. Nowadays, Muhammad is a franchise owner of the Wild Wing Cafe located in the south of the United States. As you've surely been waiting, the answer to our previous question is the NFL. Not to be outdone, an estimated 60% of NBA players go broke within five years of retirement. 
That's it for our list. Which athlete were you most surprised to find here? While things turned out okay for these 10, there are tons of athletes who blew away their fortunes and never recovered. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to The Sportster for more awesome content. Until next time.